Okay. So as we continue to look at the uh, principles of true education, uh, as found here in the testimonies of God's spirit, which of course we've seen point us back to the true principles found in the scriptures. Uh, we are continuing our look here in the book Education, and we're still in chapter 5, the education of Israel. Last week we began looking at how the feasts played an important place or part in the education of Israel. And that uh, the daily life was centered in the family, which was both a school and a church. Uh, but three times a year, there were uh, communal gatherings of God's people uh, where there was public worship and education about spiritual things. And also we saw that even just the, the means of the journey to Jerusalem that they had to go on anciently and how they traveled in in small bands together and uh, sang songs together and the time of year that the feasts were timed to was how beautiful and how all of these things were designed by God to, to impress uh, the mind and the memory through all of the senses of the object lesson connected with the experience. Uh, that's where we left off, I believe, in our last study. So pressing on, on page 42, paragraph 2, here in the book Education, so it says the ceremonies witnessed at Jerusalem in connection with the Paschal service, the night assembly, the men with their girded loins, shoes on feet, and staff in hand, the hasty meal, the lamb, the unleavened bread, and the bitter herbs, and in the solemn silence, the rehearsal of the story of the sprinkled blood, the death-dealing angel, and the grand march from the land of bondage. All were of a nature to stir the imagination and impress the heart. Oh, that's a, a powerful description of this Paschal service, the ceremony that was used as a means of education. Excuse me, Brother Craig. When they say the rehearsal, the rehearsal for what? Uh, they they re heard it. Okay, re okay. So it was it, the story was spoken again every okay. time. Every time they would celebrate the Passover after the actual Passover, they would go through this uh, uh, ceremony and ritual that included rehearsing the story of the sprinkling of the blood. Okay. So it means they would, they would retell the story and they would rehear it. So, um, I, I don't think, it, I, this wasn't like practice. This was the actual. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. It, just yeah. <laughs> it wasn't like a dress rehearsal. No, no, this was the rehearing, that kind of rehearsal. It's a different use of the word. Um, so this is, this is really uh, uh, important to understand here now that, that these, the, the solemnity of these feasts and for Israel, also the object lesson of the experience uh, were to uh, designed of God 
to stir the imagination and impress the heart. The one who designed our imagination and who designed our heart designed a ceremonial observance that would impress and, and stir those, those very things uh, to think of their spiritual meaning. Of course, we understand here it's pointing to the anti-type, yes. It's the type pointing to the anti-type. Again, we've seen how this principle of typology is, is central to God's means of teaching his people through repeating patterns to help us understand, having designed our, our minds with that capability of pattern recognition. And here we have the uh, uh, attributes the, of, of the experience that they had connected with the deliverance from the death-dealing angel and from the land of bondage. Of course, we can know that that's actually the deliverance from sin made possible by Christ's sacrifice, the lamb. Right there at the heart of the Paschal service, the lamb. Together with the unleavened bread and the bitter herbs. And the sprinkling of the blood, the lamb is sacrificed. The lamb as it had been slain is what delivers us from the death-dealing angel and out of the land of bondage, which we see actually involves a grand march. By the way, at the, at the conclusion of the Day of Atonement, there was a special work of, uh, uh, of cleansing and hallowing the sanctuary that involved the sprinkling of blood that is connected with uh, our deliverance from the death-dealing angel and a grand march of deliverance uh, from this land of bondage of, to sin. To be with our, our reigning king. So there's this beautiful Paschal service that starts the year. Of course, it's connected with the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Uh, how, long, how long did the Feast of Unleavened Bread last for? seven days. So here we have a pattern of seven connected with with the first feast, which is a pattern in type according to a greater anti-type in reality, the substance in Christ. And there's a pattern of seven connected with it. At the beginning of the cycle of seven feasts. There's this first of the three feasts where every uh, uh, man was required to attend. Uh, included the feast of unleavened bread at the Passover and the feast of weeks and the feast of tabernacles, which actually follows after here in this passage on the education of Israel. So we learn about Christ and him crucified at the Paschal service and how that sets us free. And we can study each of the details here of the Paschal service to learn to have our imagination stirred and our hearts impressed. Yes, sister? So you, Sister Ann? Yeah.
Maybe you didn't mean to do that. Okay. Well, you come to the end of the pattern of seven feasts, the seventh feast, the feast of tabernacles here in the next paragraph, paragraph three. It right? tells us indeed the feast of tabernacles or a harvest festival with its offerings from orchard and field, its weeks encampment in the leafy booze, its social reunions, the sacred memorial service, and the generous hospitality to God's workers, the Levites of the sanctuary, and to his children, the strangers and the poor, uplifted all minds in gratitude to him who had crowned the year with his goodness and whose paths dropped fatness. So here we see there's a a feast connected with the ingathering of the spring harvest at the beginning and a feast connected with the ingathering of the fall harvest, connected with the end of the cycle. Very interesting, it's like a chiastic mirror. And the Feast of Tabernacles also lasted for seven days. Interesting, plus a special eighth day at the end. connected with the king. Uh, the Feast of Tabernacles is a harvest festival. And of course it comes after the Day of Atonement in the cycle. And we've seen is connected to the kingship of Christ. Uh, Zechariah 14 tells us that connection. Let's remind ourselves of that. Yes, verse 16, Zechariah 14, verse 16, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And it shall be that whosoever will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not up and have no rain, there shall be the plague where which the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So we see the conclusion of the cycle brings us to worshiping the king. The scripture tells us who is Christ. This is the Lord of hosts. Christ himself, the Lord of Sabaoth. You see, even in the King James, they capitalize king here. And they connect it with the Lord, the name of God. The I am, the king of creation, the cre uh, of existence. And we thank him for every good thing in existence. That's what the feast, the harvest feast of tabernacles was about. It was also about entering under the tent of our, our heavenly husband and heavenly father. Uh, by entering into the marriage relation with God, by entering into the covenant relationship. We see the outpouring of the anointing, the rain, and the plagues, the negative sign of the negative fulfillment of the sign. Or symbol. You see, it was a very social uh, engagement again. See, God's purpose of using his people corporately as part of means of education. Again, the primary education would be taken care of uh, on the daily basis 
in the family, in the home. But that there were these communal times three times a year, which were very important means of education. So it's strange that we've gotten away from that as God's people. And we don't have these gatherings three times a year as his people, communally, where it's time set aside especially for God and for worship and for uh, uh, sacred social relations. Let me see, it's also included generous hospitality to God's workers about caring for one another, for being my brother's keeper, Or ensuring the ones who were truly doing the right teaching, the Levites of the sanctuary, and caring for the stranger and the poor. I'm demonstrating that God provides for everyone. It's the time of honoring the king, of worshiping the king, having gratitude to him, who had love, love how she ties into the imagery we've been looking at, how has crowned the year with his goodness. Kingly imagery of Christ connected here to the Feast of Tabernacles. And it says, crown of goodness, that his paths drop fatness, thanking God and having that attitude of gratitude for all of the goodness that he has provided. That's part of the completing the cycle here in the annual cycle of feasts as a means of education and it's also in the antitypically completing the cycle of salvation the feast of tabernacles where we worship the king and he drops his fatness his goodness as his crowning work of delivering us and it leads to perfect harmony among his people. This thankfulness for the blessings of the king. Then also in a pattern of seven, the Feast of Tabernacles. Of course, there are patterns of seven connected with the calculation of the Feast of Weeks. Well, I believe also in the sacrifices that were made connected with these feasts. So you have in the three feasts that you were required to come to, to observe at Jerusalem, as a Hebrew male, 20 years old or older, and most came anyway, beyond that as well, we saw, where was this chiastic pattern and with a seven at the beginning, in the midst, and at the end. Revealing a perfect pattern of education in the fee system of the plan of salvation. It's, we see, again, Christ-centered. To It's to know him and to acquaint ourselves with him, to have knowledge of the holy. We see the work of, of atonement throughout the whole process of the feast system happening here. That everything is designed to bring us back to oneness with him uh, as 
as seen in the Feast of Tabernacles uh, festival, harvest festival. Uh, but grounded on the foundation, the sure foundation, the rock Christ Jesus in the first festival, the Paschal service. Where he made an atonement for us on the cross. So ever since sin entered uh, this world, uh, God has put in place immediately his, his everlasting covenant uh, to make atonement for us, to make back to one that which had separated into two because of sin. And he designed uh, these feast uh, uh, observances to help us have a view of this uh, work of salvation through time, this work of at one of res restoring us back at one with himself. Uh, yes, there was a, a special feast, the, uh, the sixth feast, the, the day of at one uh, That was a, 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 a annual, a yearly uh, type uh, for a special work to be done at the end of time. Uh, but the, that at one minute process actually is, is connected to all seven feasts in a broader sense, uh, which are uh, the entire plan of salvation is really about God uh, uh, stepping in to the breach to, to initiate and accomplish the at one minute process. And this, this was all part of what, how God desires to stir our imagination and impress our hearts. And it's these, these anti-typical realities, these greater substantive realities that God desires to stir our imagination and impress our hearts, not only in this life, but even forever in the life to come. And uh, uh, they, they had the, uh, they saw things uh, uh, seemed, you know, more, well, concrete, as it were, because they were object lessons, but they were only seeing in type and shadow. We don't have as, as, as many physical object lessons for us, though we can mentally consider the ones that they experienced. Uh, but we have a better understanding of the greater reality, the substance of the feasts and they ought to be uh, our study and and they ought to be a, a the subject of teaching in, in our schools as a purposes of education the entire feast system the entire plan of salvation as it's revealed in type and shadow needs to be ought to be understood by God's people and by the children of God's people. We saw that the children weren't excluded from this understanding. And the stories were recounted to the Hebrew children. They were involved in the process. It was a communal effort where they went together as families and came together as a community and with with ones of all ages including all children of all ages and this was a means of education for all ages not just for children it was a lifetime of education 
uh, where you were supposed to continue to be able to increase and grow in your understanding throughout your lifetime, cooperating with the Lord and his spirit. And very interesting, the next paragraph for us, by the devout in Israel, fully a month of every year was occupied in this way. It was a period free from care and labor and almost wholly devoted in the truest sense to purposes of education. So that's pretty staggering to think that fully a month every year was dedicated. This is beyond every Sabbath once a month, once a week. In addition to that, fully a month every year was occupied in this way. By the way, if you have if you go for a full year of Sabbath, that's almost two months. So it's really three months of a year were dedicated to God, wholly devoted to God and to education. And nearly fully a month in this uh, 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 communal uh, uh, feast system uh, where three times a year they would have these larger gatherings wholly devoted to purposes of education where the cares and labors of life were set aside Notice it wasn't everybody in Israel, sadly. It was by the devout in Israel. Clearly there were others <laughs> who chose not to avail themselves of the blessing of following God's instructions for how to conduct our, our entire life on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, on an annual basis, on, on a lifetime basis. God has a plan and a purpose for us. And the devout in Israel who follow God's instructions had this extra mo a month a year set aside, especially for this communal education. In addition to that, which happened on the weekly uh, uh, Seventh-day Sabbath, which also is a communal educational uh, endeavor. And does, does modern Israel have such a commitment to, to set aside a fully month every year for the purpose of education? This is a an ideal toward which we ought to strive in having means for the Lord to have his people gather and praise him that God has found many alternative ways for us to gather in these last days. Um, and uh, which has become necessary at times. But we ought to not neglect the assembling of the brethren, as it were. That God, God continually has light shining among his people, and he does not give all light to any one person. And we ought to be uh, meek and lowly and humble and desiring to, to study with others 
to see how God is speaking to them. And, brother Craig. Yes, brother. Strange question. When I know that um, a few hundred years ago they had home schools, but when did this stop and when did they start having quote unquote public schools and everyone started to go to public schools? When did homeschooling actually change and things really turned away from this sort of education? Um, well, that's a great question, brother. Um, uh, public schools certainly uh, uh, became, uh, uh, started to become into prominence in, in, the, uh, in the 19th century, the 1800s, um, basically Ellen White's day, um, mm -hmm. is when public education started to become something that was uh, considered uh, uh, important and uh became uh became became a reality started to become a reality and uh but it evolved over time it took you know it took decades and even well into the 20th century uh before i think it became a uh, truly universal uh the way it is today um so i would say it's only been and even and even then in, in rural places it probably was was a lot less than you think um until maybe the past 50 years to mm -hmm. or 70 since world war ii maybe i think uh, uh it really became like the system that it is today um so and, and I mean, there's, that, that's a whole study. Uh, interesting, um, how public education arose, and also how you know the philosophy of of education uh, in modern education sort of came to pass. <clears throat> and of course, we know that there are you know you know uh, uh, other spirits working in this yeah. world from below. Uh, who are seeking to mold the minds of the world and of the youth, <clears throat> and have been doing and have been doing so for generations at this point, um, and in many ways very successfully. Um, <clears throat> and yet, God keeps alive His principles of true education among the devout in Israel, <clears throat> you know, the ones who do seek to to do what God says to do, even when it doesn't make logical sense or e seem to make economic sense or, or, or whatever other excuse we might come up with not to do what God says. Mm -hmm. And that God had, had a blessing. It was then, then that included uh, in, a, in a great measure, the purpose of education that came from these communal gatherings um, uh, to enact, as it were, uh, the plan of salvation in type. To, to really be our, our, our study guide to understand Christ's work for us in the heavenly sanctuary. We see how God provided for everyone in the conclusion of the feast cycle here again in the Feast of Tabernacles. How God has faithful workers today who are cooperating with him in his work in the heavenly sanctuary, who follow the Lamb wherever he goes. And who he especially provides for in his own way 
and his, in, and his infinite wisdom. God has, has workers everywhere and has teachers everywhere who are sharing his word and who are reaching hearts and minds. And he provides for them uh, in, in, in a thousand ways of which we know nothing. And we also see he's he's especially with those who who seek to care for the strangers and the poor. That the king's blessing will be upon them to show that he might crown the year with his goodness, that he might crown the, the entire work of salvation with his goodness. As we know that a, a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband so that he is making us like himself is the demonstration that he is the, the true king who made all things and who rules and reigns over all. And, then he, and he does it by demonstrating his goodness. We become his bride by our willing submission to his goodness. It's his goodness that brings repentance in Acts chapter 5. The goodness that he gives freely that we don't deserve turns our stubborn hearts back to himself. And the Feast of Tabernacles is the celebration of uh, that reality. What's the ingathering harvest? Uh, in both cases, um, uh, the barley and wheat harvest in the spring feasts and the orchard in the field in the fall harvest, the olive and the grape. Um, teach us about the great final harvest, the great work of final judgment even the judgment of the living. <clears throat> you also see the encampment in the booze made of branches, leafy booze, where they would stand under the branch, under the dominion of the king, the true king, the branch, the one who builds the temple of the Lord, as we've seen. Again, so this restoration of right relationship with God leading to the restoration of a right relationship with one another, the social relations, and the caring for others in their needs out of an attitude of love and gratitude. A means of education for God's people as a community. And so a month every year ought to be occupied in this way. A period free from care and labor. If you did observe the feasts, you they were it was automatic time off. They couldn't say no, you have to work. Oh, you know, that was your right. And you were actually obligated to go, so they couldn't 
make you not go. And you were free from the care of daily toil and labor. You could just focus on God and his goodness and love and learn of him. Now, can I ask you? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Now, what, how would we, if we said we'd like to do that, how would we go about doing that? Well, um, there are different ways. Um, there are still some times and means of meeting communally among God's people. In at least a limited sense, we have camp meetings. Mm -hmm. um, and our attendance there could at least have the possibility of 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 serving such a purpose. I know a lot of what actually happens at our camp meetings these days really doesn't fit into that uh, mm -hmm. model of what, what they were doing then or what we're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Yet uh, some of them are. I mean, uh, the last couple of years up in upstate New York with with Pastor Raymond's uh, 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 classes uh, has truly been uh, for the purposes of education. So finding good things that you don't know, have a valuable program, uh, people who are the devout in Israel, uh, uh, there are other types of meetings as well in the church. Um, you know, ASI conferences and other things like that or general conferences sometimes. Though, how much they actually fulfill these purposes of education needs to be prayed about. Uh, uh, there's, you know, like GYC at least used to be something good to visit. Um, I think it, in many ways we need to be doing it ourselves yeah, on our home or online or just in dedicating our time to really studying uh, as much as possible. We, we really need to find more ways to do it uh, communally as they were doing. Um, mm. But there are at least ways, I mean, in some sense, what we're doing here in our regular studies uh, comes close to accomplishing that purpose. Mm -hmm. um, we are doing this for purposes of education, and uh, I pray there's at least some communal uh, social aspect to it. Um, uh, and where we uh, uh, talk about our struggles and our praises and our prayer requests and pray about them together. And and show each other that we, we love and care for each other um, it, it is, is in many ways, I think, can be considered uh, uh, as, as accomplishing this. Though it would be nice if we had ways to do it more in person like we used to. That's true. At the same time, I think it's uh, not possible to do it because we do not have our land Yet, mm. all those um, celebrations were for the people of God who who already have the land. It's true. So mm -hmm. we are waiting for Jesus to come back so we can celebrate everything <laughs> all Amen. the time. Yeah. But so uh, we, can, yeah, we can we uh, can fulfill the purposes of purposes. Sorry, purposes of education through studying together, through helping each other. I, I think that's the only way right now. Yeah. And I think God is really blessing that way. Brother Craig, to lift, to lift each other up and, keep, and uh, study the word mostly every day, be in the Bible. As you can. Amen. Absolutely, yes. This is nice right here. We study together as a Bible study. Ooh. Praise God. And I think God has people doing uh, small group Bible studies like this all over the world. 
-hmm. where he's he's accomplishing the same purposes that he did for Israel anciently. But you know, the, we're all we're all traveling on the same journey to the New Jerusalem. Yes. Uh, but we don't we can't see each other as clearly as they could see each other as they were traveling. <laughs> Uh, and yet it's 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 essentially the same experience just experienced in a different way but the, the yeah. same god leading us he never stops working amen that's right for all the, for all the evil that happens on the internet god god uses it to accomplish his purposes uh, Satan can't do anything to stop that. Uh, praise the Lord. True. Any other thoughts, questions, comments? We see there was, was there was quite an, an, an elaborate system to God's God's plan of education for ancient Israel. Do you, do you think it's any less elaborate for for Israel today? It shouldn't be. Shouldn't be. God, God had had made provision for everything, had thought through everything in advance. And we ought to, by faith, believe and look for the same today. I mean, we, we certainly uh, have confirmation here of how God uses uh, 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 patterns in type and anti-type as a primary means of education. And so uh, we're asking and seeking for discernment to understand those patterns in our day uh, will help uh, to help strengthen our faith and help uh, us in our uh, our work of education to stir the imagination and to impress the heart. Uh, here, let's pray. The Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, dear Lord, for your goodness and your love, for providing this time for us each week to to study your word, to come together as your people, to to learn uh, in your your true principles of education together corporately uh, as you design, Lord. We need you to be our teacher, Lord. We need your spirit to, to impress these things in our minds and in our hearts in a way that we understand correctly and can can take it to heart and be changed and also that we can share with others and be a blessing. Only you can do that, Lord. Please be our pillar of cloud by day and our pillar of fire by night. And, uh, uh, we, we claim your promise that you would accomplish a, a restoration of all things, Lord. And we look forward to that time of the restoration of, of the land, Lord, where we can uh, uh, ob observe uh, and uh, uh, rejoice a rehearsal of your salvation for us for all eternity, Lord, uh, with an attitude of gratitude for all of your goodness that you have provided for us. Please make that our reality as our prayer. May it be in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.